think a fun matchup here. Yeah. Two of the top guys at the safety market, Xavier McKinney, who we have talked about a little bit, and Cameron Curl from the Washington Commanders. Both of these guys young. This is going to be their first post-rookie contract contract. Curl is 25, just turned 25. Xavier McKinney turns 25 before the start of the season. Uh, Curl, very reliable, mm -hmm. but not much of a, uh, a ball production guy. Three interceptions his first year, hasn't uh, touched the ball since. Uh, a couple fumble recoveries. Xavier McKinney, I think a better player. Both of these guys in the division, both of these guys probably going to cost, you know, I think McKinney maybe you're looking at like, 16, 17 yeah. uh, a year, given the market, and Curl maybe more like 13, 14, something like that. How do you how do you break this one down? Well, first off, I'm going to put on my Jim Beheim here, and uh, I'm not thrilled with the selection committee. Off the road, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at that. Um, okay. You know that that's where that's going when you say that. I did not know either that, that or I can, you know, okay. I'm not going to, I'm going to start yelling at Anthony DeBundo. <laughs> well, that, well, that's what this is regarding here. Is Don't ask difficult <laughs> questions of me. <laughs> I'm not, I'm thrilled. Jim Beheim. I'm not thrilled with the selection committee here because mm. this is a premier matchup. I would like to see this on the final weekend or maybe in the sweet 16 to make this in the opening round. I get ah. what you're doing. You're putting the two high priced guys together. It's not like these are seated. It's more thematic. The matchups. I get that. But there's some other matchups where I would have liked a better first round yeah, draw. Yeah, we got to spread the love a little bit. Sometimes players. you need it. You need yeah. a good if we just have easy first round <laughs> sure. matchups. What kind of show is that? Sure. Um, so, anyways, to answer the question, I would go McKinney here as more likely. I think McKinney's the better player. Uh, the price tag makes me a little skeptical on on McKinney. I saw in Shield Kapadia's piece, he had he thought <laughs> yeah, he thought the Marcus Williams contract. Was 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 maybe in the in the ballpark and if for McKinney for McKinney okay. and if you're talking 14 million, that's that's more uh, in line with I think what the Eagles might be willing to pay. Now, so if there you're was factoring thought, in inflation. There was a thought that maybe the Giants would transition tag yes. McKinney, right? And they chose not to. I think Jonathan Jones reported that part of the thinking was that because Duggar got the tag, that would make the McKinney market if he got the tag like too prohibitive for them. It didn't really make a lot of sense to me uh, because you can also rescind the tag and still yes. get the comp pick. I think it's just not a well-run organization. Yeah. That's um, so if you're doing the exercise of why is this guy available, like it seems too good to be true. Maybe it's just that it's a bad organization. It, it just strikes me as odd that a 24 year old um, pl playmaking safety, he has coverage skills. He, he, he can, he can do what you want from that position. A former second round, high second round pick that he would be, uh, that, that they would let him hit, hit the market. So this is a matter of price, but he's the player to, to circle back to Friday's show. I think you hit it on the head. If you're going to pay someone big money, he's the player that I would target outside of like an edge rusher. He's the player that I would target. And it's just how high would that go? But between these two, McKinney and Curl, I like McKinney more because I, I, I think he's a better athlete. And I, I think there's, there's more coverage ability there. Now, you have done a good job uh, sort of like recycling the, the Malcolm Jenkins yes. free agency, right? When there were two bigger bigger safeties, TJ Ward and mm -hmm. uh, Jarvis Bird. Yep. Like those were the guys at the top of the market. Bird was coming off that, that crazy interception season. But like I think if, if, if there are several really good players and the price is not super different, I want to make sure I get the best of them. Mm-hmm. Now there's there's some guesswork as to who is the best, and like the Eagles probably thought that Jenkins was the best. I think they were a little bit interested in Bird, not so much Ward, different yep. type of player, right? But um, like Cameron Curl, to me, I don't want to pay a premium. I don't want to pay a premium price for the guy who's like the second or third or fourth best option on the market. I agree with what you're saying there, and I, I just think McKinney's the better player. I, I think with with Curl, you're you're paying. A bit of an inflated price. And by the way, if, if the commanders are just flush with cap space, right? Yeah. If they're not now They do him, have some safety depth. That is part of the Sure, like, but, sure. Yeah, yeah they, they drafted Jatavius Martin last year. Um, Our friend Percy Butler. Percy Butler, Louisiana Tech. You were all over that one. Um, so I, I hear you there. I just think, I think McKinney's the, the better player, the more likely option. It just depends on, on price. But it's interesting the callback to Marcus Williams because 
if you're if if you're saying the Eagles don't pay for safeties, no, the Eagles were willing to pay Marcus Williams. They actually went hard after Marcus Williams. They did not get him. Marcus Williams chose Baltimore. That was not based on the Eagles contract. That was just him wanting to play for Baltimore. And that's a fascinating sliding doors because who knows what what would happen with AJ Brown or kind of thereafter if they committed, you know, 14, 15 million to Marcus Williams. But yeah, are, are you in, in line that McKinney's the more likely option? I think of the two, I agree, okay. yeah, McKinney. I, and I just sort of think, I, I am still not convinced that the Eagles want to spend a lot of money on a safety. I think they might want to bring in an Eddie Jackson type to okay. sort of get through the first few weeks of this season. He can be the starter if he if he looks good and is healthy. And eventually you, you expect it to be Reed Blankenship and Sidney Brown moving forward. I don't think that that's unreasonable. But they're going to they're they're going to add somebody of real significance who is in their prime on defense mm-hmm. this year. That like I feel very confident about that. Yes. And just given the options available, if it's not Legarius Sneed or, you know, JC Horn or, or some trade target at corner, there's no corner on the market. And at linebacker, like I think they would like to add a really good linebacker to like be here for a couple of years. But are you going would you rather spend, you know, $15 million on Jordan Brooks or on Xavier McKinney? I would much rather spend it on Xavier McKinney. I agree with you. And I, I, I think I agree with everything you said in terms of the Eagles being players. Uh, something I, I wrote today, that's my expectation. The only variable that, that we really haven't discussed uh, is that if Hassan Reddick's camp comes back to them and says, all right, this is, this is the contract we can get. And the Eagles say, oh, we can pay you that. Right. Like, we're willing to pay you that. So let's say it's $22 million or $23 million. Then if, if the Eagles are paying that to Reddick, um, and even though the cap hit would be lower in, in year one, that would, they would probably view that as their big ticket signing to a certain extent. And then maybe you, you go in more of like the five to seven million range at safety and, a couple guys. and at linebacker. Yeah, yeah I think that's possible. Uh, all right, so Xavier McKinney moves on and ousts Cameron Curl. Curl, Curl, Curl. We all silly like the mayor. 